Uh, my name is Varun Sani. Uh, I'm professor in international politics at Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Okay, what we're going to do today is take our discussion of the last class forward, and we're going to try to now understand what great powers are. And we're going to try to, in a way, distinguish great powers from a whole bunch of different other cognate categories that exist. Uh, you know, for example, superpowers, for example, middle powers, emerging powers, empires, world powers. There are a whole bunch of other terms as well. And how do we distinguish the concept of great power from other such cognate concepts? So what then is a great power? A great power is quite simply a state that has system-shaping capabilities and intentions. In other words, it's a state that has both the willingness to shape the system as well as the power to do so. Both those elements are necessary. Capabilities are necessary, willingness is necessary. Let's take an example of each to sort of you know, amplify this point further. Cuba, for example, is a country that has for long tried to play a global role. Ever since the Cuban Revolution, there is this tendency to play a global role in Cuban foreign policy. Uh, we have here a map of Southern Africa. And you can see there was a whole period in which Cuba and what was then the apartheid region of South Africa, they were really in some fundamental sense locked over fundamentally Angola, also Namibia. But the point that is important to understand is that although Cuba was willing to play a system-shaping role, it didn't quite clearly have the capabilities to play a system-shaping role. And a contrary example is that of the United States. I've got here a cartoon which is really of the period between, you know, the time, the time the League of Nations was being set up. And this cartoon really is about the United States saying, that it's not going to enter the League of Nations. Uh, and here's Japan coming up. And the United States during the interwar period, it was by most reckoning the most powerful state in the international system, yet it was going through a period of isolationism and was deliberately staying out of international politics during this period. So again, even the United States had the capability, you could say during the interwar years, roughly speaking from 1919 to 1939, the United States would not have a willingness to play a systemic role. So again, it would not in that sense make sense for us to consider the United States as a great part. What about superpowers? These are the big three at the Yalta Conference towards the end of the Second World War. We've got Stalin from the Soviet Union, we've got Roosevelt from the United States, and Churchill from the United Kingdom. These are the big three. But we know that soon after the end of the Second World War, the big three really becomes two superpowers. These are the two superpowers, the USSR and the United States, NATO and the Warsaw Pact, a view from the North Pole. Where is Britain? Well, Britain is no longer in the picture. Because by that time, the British Empire has started to dissolve. So what then are superpowers? Superpowers are states that really must be able to conduct a global strategy. They must be able to play in a way, have the capability to destroy the world. They must command vast economic potential. And they must have, in a way, a global influence. But most important, perhaps, they need to present something like a universal ideology. So at least if you think about the superpowers, in the context of the United States and the Soviet Union, we can say that these were states that, apart from their overwhelming systemic superiority in terms of capabilities, they had this vision, a vision for all the others to emulate. And that is therefore the United States and the Soviet Union. A single superpower is sometimes called a hyperpower. This is a term uh, that uh, the French uh, Foreign Minister Henry came up with. In French. But essentially, if you think about a hyperpower, we're thinking about the United States after 1991. Here I have another cartoon which is essentially summing up you know, the sort of overwhelming power that the United States had in the system 
in the period immediately following the invasion of Iraq. Uh, it really was at that time a fairly untraveled and restricted power. What about an empire? I think that's the last of the concepts that we will sort of try to deal with today. What is an empire? An empire really is a political entity that maintains an alien rule over an extended territorial expanse for an extended period of time. So that it must be an alien rule, first of all. Secondly, it must be over an extended territory and it must be for an extended period of time. If, if there is a power that sort of, you know, occupies a large chunk of land for a few years around itself, it does not become an empire. Empires need to be more than that. They have to create, it is, it is a necessity for them to create a network, a physical network. So the Roman Empire, for example, had its amazing highway network. Uh, they need to create a legal infrastructure. They need to create more than anything else an overarching semblance of order. So that all the various constituents of that empire have a sense that they are ultimately being governed by a common political and a common legal system. The best empires in history, the empires that are most remembered, most recalled, are those that have not just elements of order, which is of course critical in imperial governance. Without order you can't have an empire. But it's not just order. They also have to have a modicum of justice and welfare built into the motion of the power. And here we will just take a look at a few of the empires. Uh, this is, for instance, the expanse of what was the Persian Empire. This was the Roman Empire at its greatest extent, south of the Mediterranean as well. This was, of course, one of the most formidable empires in history, the Mongol Empire. Just look at its expanse, all the way over most of China, all the way to Europe, getting into parts of India, and of course the British Empire. So as you can see, when you think about great powers, you've got to think about great powers in the context of other cognate concepts. We have in this module discussed really great powers and how they differ from superpowers and from empires.